Hello everyone, welcome back to another video for me, Beast of My Name. And today in that video, I have a special guest here with me. I have a guns here. Um, and we're gonna cover today the new update talk, uh, uh, sorry, the new update, pet, the patch notes. And like I used to do the update talk with previous members, but I promise you all that I'm gonna do um, also with Yes, outside of a kingdom, right? Um, might be also interesting to see from a um, YouTuber's perspective or from a top aligned perspective of these uh, patch notes. So yeah, today here is a guns with me. Um, maybe for the viewers on my channel who don't know you, maybe you can say like um, a couple sentences about yourself. Hey, first of all, thanks for having me, bro. Appreciate it. Uh, I've been watching a lot of your streams, dude, and I, like you heard me say, I give, a, give you a lot of credit, grinding, putting in that work, doing the R5 thing, streamings, talking to chat, it's, in, uh, it's actually pretty impressive. <laughs> hey, uh, um, thank, you. thank you, thank you. Yeah, 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 so a little, a little about myself, I mean, I've been doing content creation since like 2015, played Rise of Kingdoms for three years, uh, came over to Call of Dragons, started the whole content creation stuff here. Um, now I'm right now I'm currently playing with uh, Noir, getting ready for the new season. Awesome, awesome. Uh, actually, quite uh, interesting. Um, did you did uh, when you played Wise of King? Did you did via YouTube? Because I never saw you. I did YouTube uh, for Wise of Kings as well. I played it also for three and a half years. Um, did you did via some time uh, some some type of uh, YouTube? No, actually, I did a little bit of Twitch and, oh, okay. you know, Rise of Kingdoms and Call of Dragons pretty much lives on YouTube. No one really goes to Twitch to watch that stuff, but that's where I was at for, for yeah. at least a season. Yeah. Yeah, like you can completely forget Twitch when it comes to mobile games. All right, but mm -hmm. uh, hey, we, we can maybe uh, uh, talk about stuff like that in a, in a live stream in the future. Today, we're talking yeah, yep. here about the update 1.0.27 calling of courage um so for everyone who might asking when it's coming out uh it's coming based on that mail in six days out the update um and yeah then gonna be like always um the server shut down for that um yeah so i would say we're gonna jump into the first point which is uh, season of strife calling of courage um it is a new map based on Hollandale's geography and centered around the Stone of Peace as the site of a legendary struggle. Um, that's interesting, you know, I, I already like thought about, okay, it must be a new map. It's, it cannot be like a Tamaris or, you know, Bellerin. It needs to be some kind of new content, but that they're using a region's geography is kind of interesting. What, what, what do you think about that? Hollandale, I mean, I specifically remember Hollandale in, like, Season 1 Plus, I believe. Um, but as long as as long as long they open up the map a little bit more, considering they're bringing in new Cav heroes, it'd be sick to see, like, them open up the field more and seeing, like, like a freaking 100 cavalry flank with ca freaking camouflage on or something cool like that. So, I mean, I think it has potential as long as they uh, open up the map a little bit more. Yeah, totally. I agree with that. I mean, previously they have, to, um, you know, agreed to many points what the community have said. So, and they switch a lot of stuff. So, um, hopefully they also have listened to the community on that point to make the map more open, to make it less choke point based on. And yeah, so we can enjoy actually the, the open field fighting. Um, own your mastery skills. Mastery skills allow your heroes to learn. Our hero skills replace their own, combining their abilities to turn the tide of battle. We both should know about that. In in Rise of Kingdoms, we have a, a map, a KVK, which having exactly this type of content, right? Um, so to everyone who's probably not understanding what that means, it is basically just you have like um, probably a different um, window or like type of event or something um, where you can then um, choose hero skills and put them on other heroes right so um and build completely new uh marches basically uh which is a very interesting in my opinion you're gonna bring a lot of new content also in a lot of new marches um and it's 
probably gonna switch the whole meta currently. Um, what do you think? Is that a good thing or is that a bad thing in your opinion? I think it's a good thing in a sense of how how you said like it's gonna bring like a bunch of different um variables into the game. However, what does worry me though is I wonder how much testing the developers have done on their own to see like the different abilities of these marches. Like we saw yeah. uh, like uh earlier on in the season when people were running Magra and freaking uh Ferondel doing unstoppable mm. skill damage. Like I I, I expect there to be a few broken builds, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. There's just so many variables, but I, I think it should be interesting. Yeah, uh, I saw that um, I saw that short video from um, Mr. Sneaky, and I was, like, completely stunned about that, like, constant, uh, you know, skill damage putting out there from that march. It was uh, interesting, but it was also, like, uh eh. Okay, it should be that really in the game, you know like, what I mean? Like, hmm. It was insane, <laughs> dude. Uh, yeah, um, but what's going to be also interesting, especially now that they have said they're not going to bring Long March Warfare back, so that the archers having now the same range like it used to be, it's going to be interesting how they're going to be, you know, valuable in terms of uh, skills. You know, we, we could do, um, like some calf marches with like Sindrian skills or something, you know, like like some crazy normal tech crit damage bits on calves running around. Um especially like you said, if you have a new more open map, uh then yeah, there are gonna be some crazy skills. If I just think about it, it's, it's gonna be very interesting to see. A lot of testing apparently gonna be happening, of course. And a lot of new YouTube videos can be made. <laughs> so a oh lot my of content God, there. God, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so gonna be very interesting to see. Yeah, let me know in the comments what you guys think about uh, that point. Do you like that you can switch around the hero skate and make complete, um, quote unquote, heroes? Or do you think we should for now stick uh, to the current system what we have and that the developers should fix, for example, the legs or, you know, like uh, doing some other stuff? Yeah, let me know in the comments what you think about that. All right, the next point, new season building. Alliance Siege Bastion. Alliance Siege Bastions can attack other Alliance buildings and can be garrisoned by deploying Legion. They can expand your Alliance territory while serving as a strong defense frontline. So, from my understanding, it's going to be basically somewhere on the map, it's going to be that kind of building. Um, I would expect it's going to be like the Spire around show points, probably, or like near Behemoths and stuff. Um, and then gonna be interesting how much value does it bring you to actually garrison, you know? Uh, I don't know how you feel about that, uh, Guns, but in my opinion, people are afraid to lose troops. Like, uh, people not putting the work into, you know, uh, ready the passes and stuff, uh, when there's an option. And, um, like, I think a lot of people are scared of actually losing troops, especially because you're losing then elixir production, right? You're losing, um, the more troops you lose, the less uh, your elixir is per day. So, yeah, what do you think about that? Especially with the part that you can garrison that new structure. I think it's definitely going to add, like, a, a different dynamic. But, yeah, if people start taking a bunch of deads from this, they're not going to... You know, Rise of Kingdoms players, for example, they're used to having a bunch of deads, you know? Yeah. Million, two million plus every every KVK. But, like, here, we're accustomed to not really losing deads. So I feel like, you know, if if they do want to bring deads, I really hope it's, like, a very low percentage, man. Because, I mean, at this point in the game, like, players are barely getting to the point where they can send full marches out. You know, for mm. like full three to five marches, and you know, if we take a lot of deads, yeah, a lot of people won't be happy. But if they don't do a bunch of deads and make it kind of like a contesting thing, I think it could be good. Yeah, I agree. Um, especially the problem what I have with taking deads also is you're getting too less in return. In my opinion, you're getting mm -hmm. not enough speed ups, you're not getting enough resources to be able to retrain these uh, amount of deads which you would take. Um. Like in Rise of Kingdoms, right? In Rise of Kingdoms, you have way more um, events going on, way more rewards, which you also get. Um, so you can compensate these millions of deaths, which you're getting every KVK, which you don't have yet in Call of Dragons, right? Because it's built on 
the free policy, the uh, the free elixir healing. Um, so yeah, we need like it's a fifty fifty in my opinion. My um towards that, I'm of course hyped for the new building, how it's gonna work, especially since it can also attack alliance buildings. But at the same time, I'm worried about garrison and if people are actually gonna put the work in to you know go in there and lose troops. Um. Brand new season policies allowing you to formulate your own unique strategy. I don't know what do you have heard about that they said um that they're gonna buff elixir healing. Do you have heard about that as well? No, honestly, I haven't even heard of uh any of the new things for the policies. Oh, okay. Yeah, so apparently I um I got the info that um it seems to be like that they said they gonna buff the elixir healing, which the community have also complained about a lot that the elixir healing is way too less. Um, mm -hmm. So, gonna be interesting, especially now that we lost the season talents, right, and we be getting new season policy. Gonna be interesting to see what type of policies are in there. Maybe something old or something, you know, something from the season talent, but they just change it a little bit. I'm looking forward for that, definitely, and see what type of strategy it's gonna bring us into the game. Um, all right, the second point, Brick of War is here. As a new season begins, who will emerge supreme up on the battlefield, take part in the Brick, uh, Brink of War event to bring glory to your realm as well as yourself and prepare for the new season. The event consists of three phases, keeping the peace, PvE, gathering forces, legion training, and preparing for war, resource donation. Each phase will grant both personal points and realm points for certain actions. Realms about to enter the new season together with content for dominance and for their place in the rankings. Personal points determine personal rankings, while realm points determine realm rankings. Personal rankings determine player rewards, realm rankings determine the buffs that a realm will receive throughout the next season. When the brink of war event and the new season will begin, players from different realms will be able to relocate to the new season map. And the first time I, I read that, it came directly to my mind of the thing what we have in Rise of Kings, obviously, you know, like um, the, the, the pre-season events, which giving you buffs based on your placement and then also granting pretty good rewards uh, to the player base who pushing in that. So I think it's a good, it's a good thing, you know, getting another buff for your realm. It's uh, also another, you know, event where you can uh, push for, where you can dominate as a, as a realm and show off, you know, your activity at these PvE event, gathering force, legion training, but well, it's for, you know, for the raids, um, and then preparing for war resource donation. I think it's going to be capped again, like probably like every half an hour or something you can donate one time. But in my opinion, stuff like that, where you have competition, especially in the, in the higher elo i would say so in the in the in the top kingdoms it's gonna be good because it's gonna push more people to actually you know be more active do more stuff and stuff like that um but what is your opinion about that do we really need stuff like that or do we say yeah that's that's really good we need competition yeah i think it's perfect dude because i mean i'm not sure about you but i i imagine your experience is probably similar to mine like the new season begins everyone's super hyped you buy whatever bundles you're going to get, and then it's like, okay, pass opens in a week, guys. See you then. <laughs> like, there's nothing mm. happening. You know, so with yeah. these three phases coming in, it's it's going to do exactly that. On top of that, it's going to help players engage or see, like, damn, like, that is a super active alliance. Because we, we've seen it time and time again when they had something similar like this, actually almost the exact same thing in Rise of Kingdoms, mm. where, like, a top alliance wasn't, putting out the numbers that people were expecting yeah <laughs> and then it has yeah. like some good uh competitive banter you know what i mean like oh you guys are slacking then they're talking crap back say oh no we don't do pve wait till it's pvp like yeah it should be good <laughs> it should be good <laughs> yeah yeah i i totally know what you mean um it's it's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be interesting, it's, especially like you said, the the first week, the first two weeks was always pretty boring, especially on the battle map since the past one, you know, had just the stage opening and uh, the the reap has fighting was then the past two. Um, 
So it's going to be interesting to see also on um, with a new map, you know, how far it's going to be uh, passes opens um, and then what type of buffs we also get. You know, I, ca I could imagine probably like damage buffs and then um, like gaming buffs or stuff like that. Um, yeah, but it's going to be going to be very interesting, especially since, like you said, it's going to show if a top alliance is really a top alliance. You know, it's 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 they can say then. Oh yeah, you know we we don't do this type of stuff. No, the, the only <laughs> way how you can say, oh we lost that is because of legion training. Because you can control if you got like a fucking uh, fisto in your kingdom, yeah. right? Who gonna just train <laughs> hundreds of millions of troops, you know, in every event? Um, so it's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be interesting to see how the top alliance is performing and also how players are reacting to it, you know, uh, to the top aligned performance in these type of events. Um, new behemoth, finally, we got a new behemoth. Right, right, uh, that's what I said. <laughs> but another shine, why is it always a shine? Bring me, bring back the dire bear. No, don't, uh, don't bring it back, please. Um, <laughs> no, we, we got uh, PDSD from season one uh, in, in 293, like, we did it over... 200 twice or something until we finally beat the fucking elite. Uh, it was over. Oh, keep it in, listen. No, um, but finally, new behemoth, Miasma Giant. After spending years uh, living in poisonous, murky swarms, some giants began to adapt to their surrounding. Not all gigantic life forms are able to survive the effects of such corrosive poisons. The existence of Miasma Giant is, in a sense, a miracle. Prepared to join forces to take on this powerful foil. So, I expect it's going to be on a new map, obviously. Uh, it's going to be on a new map. Um, but interesting that they have not pointed out any type of skill. Like they just said, oh yeah, here, it's going to be poison. That's it. Mm. I would have loved to see some more, more, uh, some more information towards the giant already. Um... Now we need to wait until, you know, probably the new map comes out and then it's going to be on web, I would assume so. Um, yeah, but um, I think New Behemoth, we both can agree on, always good, you know, new content, going to bring people back into, oh yeah, let's go Behemoth, new frame probably also. Yeah. So mm -hmm. people going to grind again for that and not feeling like, oh, I already got that frame, why do I need to show up, you know, and stuff like that. So. I think there should be in every new map which you're gonna get like new behemoths at least like one minimum um so people have this type of all oh, right let's go behemoth you know i'm gonna be there you know this type of um thinking again um i i, I think you can agree on this right yeah for sure i mean a lot of players that play games like this are collectors you know yeah, I'm not too big of a collector myself, but you know, I I do have almost all the frames except the first bear. <laughs> uh, no someone way, always really? messes that one up. Yeah, someone always messes it up. And anyway, <sighs> but yeah, it should be good. A new behemoth will be will be interesting. Um, especially how you said, like once we find out what kind of skills it does, um, maybe maybe the giant does something different out in the field that is 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 uh. Maybe it doesn't do damage. Maybe it just buffs units in the back yeah. line or something. You know what I mean? Something something a little bit different, I think, would be a cool dynamic to see. Actually, good point what you just said there. Especially uh, the behemoths are useless right now. Like, uh, all these top mm. alliances with, like, um, with hundreds of T5, they're just one-shotting behemoths. Like, there's yeah. no <laughs> real value. The only ones which I would say are these ones which buffing, like the giant or the thunder rock, right? Um, but the damage ones, such as the bear or the the necro giant, like these are completely useless on the on the field and not doing really anything. Um, so would be pretty interesting to see these type of behemoths where it's just standing in the back or buffing. Um, I would love that to be honest. I would I would really really love that to see, um, and just you know supporting behemoths basically. That would be pretty yeah, interesting. Because there's some behemoths that do buff, right? I forget exactly which buffs are for which which behemoths, which a lot of people don't really know about these buffs unless they've they're actually been uh, the Beastmaster before, but something that makes an impactful change. Yeah. That'd be cool. 
Yeah, totally. I agree. Um, a new event series. Always good. I like events. More stuff in the game to do. Um, the Library of College of Tia, I would say it's pronounced, is filled with ancient uh, arcane tomes and waiting for seekers of knowledge to unearth their secrets. Sign in for seven days to obtain exclusive avatar frames and nameplates. Hey, but uh, here again to all the collectors. There you go. New avatar frames and nameplates. Um, mm. Bookworm Bonanza. Pour over arcane tomes to collect bookmarks and commentaries to ex and exchange them for amazing reward. Festival uh, of for Fortitude, lock in daily for seven days of great rewards. Summer Smash, defeat Darklings and retrieve stolen good to save the summertime. Society creates, um, repair, you know, for a quest for, uh, by Relen, we already know about that. Automaton raid, also an event which you know about. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so good to see two of the events which we already know. I've, I've liked both events, to be honest, um, coming back here. And then getting some uh, new ones, uh, more rewards here again, and nothing against that. Like, bring me, bring me events, give me more rewards. You know what I mean? Like, I'm totally down for that. Yeah, I can agree. I mean, the only thing I would say about like the automaton raid, I, although I do like that it's something uh, additional that you can do. I wish mm. that they can do tiers. You know what I mean? Like, okay, like free to plays can finish this one. Oh, and yeah. as the tiers kind of scale, it becomes even more challenging. To, challenging to the point where, like, it's like Necro Elite from season one. Like, you got to be perfect mm. to beat this. I think that would be cool. And yeah. even add leaderboards across the game. I yeah. think even that it could be just something something small like that. I mean, I'm not a I'm not a programmer. Maybe I say something small like that, but it's probably actually very complicated to do that. But <laughs> <laughs> that'd be cool to nah, see. Nah, um, yeah, I agree. Like especially all of these free to play. You know, um, I, I I remember last time a lot of these people have asked in the chat, "Oh, ways can you help me out here?" You know, so. Um, especially for the new players it's going to be hard to beat these um these ways even when they are pretty cool you know and unique um since you have a bunch of uh fighting marches you know and not just a behemoth raid um yeah it would be uh would be cool to have these type of tiers what you said and also the leaderboard but in in terms of when you're also you're getting rewards for that right so the best team you know, who had the best time gonna get, I don't know, like two gold tokens or something. You know, something which actually mm -hmm. people, you know, make grinding for this type of events and go hard, you know, and, and find out. I mean, probably casual players don't care about that, but me personally, as a, you know, as a competitive player, I would love to have this type of, you know, grinding in that type of event um, to get extra rewards, you know, if it's possible for me to do so. 100%. Um, anything else you want to add to that? Or can I go to the next point? Yeah, I think that's about everything for that. All right. Now we're getting two new legendary heroes. We're getting here mm -hmm. the cavalry. We're having Uwak. I would say he's going to get pronounced like that. Cavalry, PvP, and skills. And then Tobin, or Tobin, I'm not sure. Uh, cavalry, rally, and tank. So we don't have any infos about what type of skills, how they look like. It's just, that's a name. That's what we're going to do. I find it interesting that one of the caps is going to be tank. I'm not sure how to use that. Like, um, I mean, caps have the problem, you know, they are not tanky at all. They're getting one shot, like, to be honest, right? Um, but I think it might can work out for rallies. It might can work out that there might be like a special build for a special march with that type of rally tank. Especially now that we're getting also a new structure which you can garrison. So yeah, I think it would be a possibility, in my opinion, that there's gonna be something interesting gonna get find out by um players which they say, Oh, look at this guy, this is working, go for it. You know what I mean? <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, it's calf heroes. Like, we don't need to lie. No one, like, 99% of community don't care about calves. Right? It's, it's, 
it is what it is, you know, like, they are there for most of them. I can use them for, like, getting runes. <laughs> uh, mm. And maybe, you know, to hunt people down if they're retreating, but in an actual open field situation or choke point situation, you can completely forget about them. Like, it, like even T5 calves, they're kind of useless. Like, you just need two, three uh, T4 marches and you beat the T5 calves. My opinion, like, um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe they're gonna change it. Maybe these two are gonna be such so OP that everyone's gonna be say, saying, Oh, you need to go for these ta uh, calf heroes, they're so broken. Um, and maybe we will see. Um, but yeah, new hero, you know, new heroes always good, gonna bring once again, um, you know, new competition, new uh, match setup, and stuff like that. So Maybe a meta uh, change. We'll see. Um, but what a, what a, what is your opinion about calf? Like your honest opinion about calf units. So I'm I'm not sure. You probably don't know this about me. A lot of people don't. But towards the end of seasons, whether we're losing or absolutely winning, I always switch to spring warden, and I call it going into hunting mode. I got a bunch of flying oh. chickens. My I use the elk riders. Uh, yeah. to kill a lot of people that just stick a bunch of tanks inside nodes, it, it crazy merits. So, but mm -hmm. so I I feel like I feel like cabs in general. I mean that could be literally a whole video of its own. But just to touch on it real quick, yeah. Um, I feel like you know for flanking and doing all that, it's pretty good. What the hell? Is someone freaking calling me. <laughs> Bad, bro. Um, yeah. So like. Being intended for what they were in, kind of intended to do, flanking, farm killing, I think they still do that. But I think with this patch, my anticipation for these new cav heroes, because the devs know exactly what you said. No one's excited about these cabs, right? Mainly because yeah. people want to use them in like big open field battles, which ultimately determine who wins the season. So my prediction is going to be, especially seeing that there's they have a tank uh, build on that, I feel like it's going to be like an insanely tanky freaking cav unit that deals mm. a bunch of counterattack damage. Almost like almost like the cav version of Goris Skogel. Um, yeah. Potentially. Because imagine, right? At the end of the day, a lot of players love merits. Even if my cav marches in and gets melted in like 10 seconds, if I come out of there with 50k merits, like that's a dub. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I get your point. It's uh, going to be... Interesting. I never, I, I didn't Let's have begin. thought about that point. That's actually quite interesting. Like, if it would be counterattack, no cap yet is built on counterattack. It's all mm -hmm. like skill damage or normal attack. Yeah, actually, you got a point there. Huh? Hey, uh, you made me hype for that now. Like, I never thought about fucking counterattack caps running around, getting hit, and, and you can also run out faster. You know, infantry, if they are stuck, they are stuck. They're not coming out. But calves might have a chance to even come out and, you know, yeah. saving like the last 50, 100k and getting actual only good reports. You know, that's actually, yeah, we'll see. Actually, I'm hyped for that now. <laughs> yeah, or the other or the other way that I, because they're bringing in those artifacts, right? One one legendary artifact specifically for the calves. Um, yeah. I'd love to see something similar to Wolf Woman and Halo where you can go in and you're just immune to range attacks like they just can't hit you uh oh. maybe that can be a little bit too op but you go in and pop a few skill damages and then come back i think that would definitely give calves i'm dude i'm telling you i ha i have a i have a strong feeling that they're gonna do something specifically that's gonna make them good for big open field battles because as developers and a business, it's like, damn, we know people aren't going to go crazy on the wheel for these. Like, what can we do to, to change that? Mm. And I think it could potentially be that. Yeah, you got a good point there. Yeah, totally. Like, um, also with, with the point of the business aspect, like, at the end, they need to make money to, you know, run the servers to keep um, paying off the, uh, you know, the people who work in on the game. So... Mm. Yeah, from a business standpoint, they need to look out that they make making calf in some way in that game useful, um, because right now it it is not at all. So, yeah. Also, the another artifact there, which is a, a rounder. Um, I think we have only one, right? Right now, it's a Fang of Ashkari. 
I think that's the only one which you can call an all-rounder. But other than the, that uh, one... The all-rounder is Visage, I think. I and think. a Stone Hunter. Hmm. Hmm. For the main, I would expect it's probably like something with magic? Mana Stone Hunter? Well, we will see. Nothing, like, there's no info yet. Um, so, we'll see when it comes out in, like, six days. Oh, wait. Oh, let's go. Exchange House. I don't know how mm -hmm. hyped you are that for that, but I'm definitely very hyped for that. Like, mm -hmm. this thing is probably going to change the whole attitude towards resource cleaning, in my opinion. So to to explain everyone, um, it is basically it's probably gonna be some type of AFA beating which we're gonna implement or like some type of um event. So what you basically can do is you can spend exchange coins to purchase resources, gold, wood, or and mana. That's fucking OP. Mana. You can exchange mm -hmm. these points for mana, right? That's what people is lacking on when it comes to resource healing. And not only that, you can also setting resources to earn gems. This is so crazy for all the free to play and low spender who are having huge trouble with getting the ready drum and watchtower done. That's gonna be so good, especially because you can only farm 1k gem per, day, uh, per week. Uh, right? Uh, when you're having this debuff on, on gem farming. So free to play and low spender can't even farm more than 1k gem. I mean, they could, but, you know, the more you farm, the, the higher it's going to take for them to farm these gems, actually. So it is good to see that they bring something in here for, you know, setting resources to earn them gem. Because free-to-play low spender have, we need to be honest about that, they have the most time in the game, right? They're putting the most time into the game, and they're going to have also, like, farm accounts. So what they can just do is now making a bunch of farm accounts, Especially with a with a new tool that which we're also bring in, it's gonna oh, it's gonna be so broken, guys. I'm telling you. So free to play low spender can use that system to you know save resources from their farm account. Especially because you might have already read here, you can get up to two billion per week now. So like the whole thing of you have this exchange house, they're increasing the amount what you can uh, transport, and also. Um, uh, that, what was the last one? I forgot about that. Um, so the whole system gonna be like, you can ju just farm gems by that. Now it's gonna be the question which I'm having for myself, will there be a type of cap? Or will there be a type of increase of resource selling? You know what I mean? Like, um, that's gonna be quite interesting to see how they're gonna balance that out. Because if you imagine you can sell two bin resources, every week and just, you know, put them into gems. Now let's say like, I don't know, 10 or 100K resources is like 10 gems. So that would be like a million would be 100 gems. And then uh, one billion would be 1K gems. But well, that's probably too much. Uh, so we're probably gonna say it's gonna be like 10K for gem 10 gems. But um, if, if that's gonna be some kind of, you know, like this, and there's no real cap um, or increase of that, people could actually farm a lot of lamps by that. Like, I can't even imagine. But uh, what what is your opinion to this whole new thing of, you know, you can buy resources and, and trade them to gems? Yeah, I'm, I'm super excited, especially because I have a little free-to-play project that, that I started working on again. It's a little 13.4 million power account, and yeah, dude, I mean, being able to get another way of getting gems, like, reliably, mm -hmm. um, to being able to buy treaties and even, even the arrows if if I need to, but specifically the treaties as well, because that's yeah. super difficult, especially especially for newer players that are in, in New Kingdoms. I'm, I'm not sure if you've made any new accounts, but, man, the level of activity on those are pretty bad, dude. I'm not going to lie. Like, you're mm -hmm. lucky if people join your rally to do a fort. Mm. lucky so you know okay. i am excited for that but i definitely hear your concerns as well when it comes to like dang like there's also going to be all these people that are going to be selling actual resources like what like i wonder what the devs have in mind to go against mm. that because now you can send two billion <laughs> resources a week 
from <laughs> one so account. Much. Yeah, it's like, insane. Wait, I think, well, not necessarily from one account, but like that's how much you can receive weekly if you have a level yeah. 25 bazaar now they call it, right? No longer markets a bazaar. Um, yeah. That's insane, dude. Like when I was reading that, I was like, wait, am I looking at that number right? That's a lot of zeros. <laughs> Yeah, 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 like we was uh, we were in voice chat earlier and have checked that um, patch note out, and I were pointing out um, limit can be increased to maximum of two billion, and people are like, wait, wait, wait what did you just say? Two billion, mm -hmm. or do we me no not meaning like two hundred million? And I say no, two billion guys, fucking nine zeros. <laughs> so <laughs> that's goddamn a lot. And yeah, you're pointing also out these people who actually save resources. I mean, we know it's against the TOS, right? But people doing it, you know, and you know it also yep. from Bison Kingdom. It's the same thing with people sharing accounts, you know. At the end, I, I have read the TOS a little bit cle uh, more clearly. Um, at the end, Farlight can say if they're going to do something against it or not, obviously, right? Um, but the moment when you start with um, to play this game and making your account um, and accepting the TOS, you're saying you're not going to do this type of stuff, right? But mm -hmm. we all know, we all know, the whole community knows that the way is like mostly every way have at some point pilots and going to buy resources. Like it's, it is, and I mean, you can like, come on, the file like sees that in the login, you know, they, they seeing when, when the account is logging in, in fucking Germany, USA, Japan, and uh, <laughs> somewhere in, in Middle East, you know, like they seeing that. So it's not like, you know, they just don't do anything against that because everyone is doing it. Is that now good or bad? Um, that comes to your personal opinion, right? To, yeah. to be honest, um, Resource selling obviously is something which uh, costs far light money, right? Obviously, right? Because people wait for buying for low prices from them instead of from the game, right? But in terms of account sharing, my personal opinion, I don't really have something against that. I don't share my my own account. Everything you know, I if what I play, I do play by myself. But I'm not against it, um, because I think. You know, it's the account owner's choice if you want to do so or not. And at the end, it's a still sh a real human being who's playing this account. It's not like um, MacBook scripting and stuff like that, you know. And obviously, if you're doing this type of stuff, then, you know. But that's something uh, that we, we're drifting here too much. Uh, I'm drifting too much uh, from, from the actual topic of the video. So, um, yeah, 2 billion is a lot. And um, I agree with your point about the resource setting, what actually they're gonna do against it are they even gonna do against something against that um or not no it's gonna be um interesting to see so but yeah um i'm i'm very hyped to see also how how is the exchange really like uh, um because on my second account right now on 293 i have not yet luckily finished town uh, uh not town uh, um ready drum and watchtower 25 so I could definitely use a lot of gems from this type of uh, <laughs> storehouse uh, exchange house. So, um, hey, bring me the gems. I'm I'm down for that. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, ah, yet yeah, now I remember what I wanted to say also. This type of exchange house is going to be also pretty interesting to the point of that they have buffed the resource healing. Right? They, um, but that's something which you can come uh, back later to that. Um, Warpad system upgrades. I mean, do we really want to go completely into detail? We are already at 38 minutes, 39 minutes. So, um, I mean, to, to make it short, if you want to say something to it, you can obviously say something to it. But to make it mm. short, they just basically change some um, of the Warpad skills, where you can get them. Um, so, it's, it's nothing crazy, you know. Um, I would suggest you guys read through it. And um, the only thing which I find pretty interesting, which I have uh, here, Exchange House giving you also um, skill cards. So am I reading it correctly, uh, Guns? Is it also that the Exchange House bringing you like skill cards? Yeah, like... Or... Mm -hmm. Is it like that? Yeah. Or is it, is, am I reading it incorrectly? 
Yeah, adjusted base price, certain uh, skill cards at Exchange House. Yeah, I mean, it, it, based off what it says there, they're going to have these skill cards available at the Exchange House, too. Like, this Exchange House is a jack of all trades, man. They're selling everything there. Resources, gems, mana, skill cards. <laughs> at at least that's what it seems like. Maybe someone yeah. in your comments could let us know, but, I mean, that's what it, that's what it seems like. Yeah. What about, I mean, if they're already saying resources, gems, and now also, you know, pet good. What about when we finally getting the opportunity to exchange our goat keys commanders into something? Mm. Oh, I'm I'm sitting on 170 fucking Valent tokens and I can't do shit <laughs> with that. I can't do they're just sitting in the inventory and I'm like, let me do something with it. Like they're just sitting there doing nothing. Uh so Come on, please, for like, put something in there. It, it don't need to be much. I, can, I, I'm also very down to like trade one hundred token for one, uh, uh, fucking go token. But so I can at least do something with that. You know, that's that's my that's my point. Like everyone is complaining, they're just sitting there and not doing anything. So, yeah, this this exchange house is gonna be um a game changer, like a whole game changer in my opinion. Um, yeah, but like I said, guys, uh, read through. The warpads, like, it's nothing crazy. Like, some skill cards going to be available with capturing warpads. Some now going to be not anymore, but you can get them from Crystal Store. Yeah. Um, go through by yourself. Yeah, even, um, so, um, point six. And then we have um, seven and eight, and then we are done. So... Improve the experience of Dragon Legions on the map, greatly reducing accidental or unrecognized commands. Uh, I mean, it's good that they're doing something for that, but to be honest, the only problem with what I have with Dragon Legions is the, the delay and the lag. Mm. I don't know, did you ever, like, saw something like a... Uh, Unrecognized command, but the mod did something which it didn't set to do so. Maybe I don't know. Maybe with unrecognized command, maybe I when I read that I'm like maybe they're just talking about laggy, or you know maybe we thought it was laggy, but it was really an unrecognized command. Like we were trying to tell the march mm. to go here, but it didn't. You had to like spam it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you would that, say it's maybe the wording which way, uh, you know, which yeah, they probably. could have said different. Yeah, true, true, yeah. I mean, it's it's good, you know, improve the experience uh, of Dragon Legion on the map. Nothing gets that. If 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 a combat getting better by that, if it's maybe reducing lag or something, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm taking it. I'm not going to complain about that. Yet um, the wording is kind of weird to me. You know, in the first moment, I would say it like commands which you didn't did, you know. But, I mean, could be also with a deck, what you said. The second point, strengthen flying units. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, engineering increase for all flying units. Finally, the fucking flying units can also do building. Um, I mean, why not? I don't, like, I'm, I'm down for that, sure. It's, uh, you know... It's not going to change the whole, you know, build plans and stuff, but hey, we are not completely used it when it comes now to bidding. So, um, and added a new flying marksman skill, bombing one, which can destroy buildings at long, at long distance, increase movement speed of flying marksman and marksman units, adjust the flying marksman units skill with a uh, white fire. Previously, if a legion has not moved for four seconds while better HP and T skill damage are increased, now when launching a normal attack, chance to trigger an increase in HP and normal attack damage. And a uh, new flying cavalry unit skill, Eagle Strike. If there are no other friendly legions within a certain range of your legion, they deal more damage. So, in my opinion, these type of changes were needed for the, especially for the markment, for the flying markment unit. Um, with change off that you not need to, um, that you need to stand for four seconds for getting above. Now you just do normal attack damage and you're getting this. Good. It's a buff. Definitely. Something which we needed. Also the movement speed increasing for flying markman and markman unit. Especially now that we're losing the, um, the long march, uh, warfare. 
uh, for the Archer units good needed. You know, um, the new flying marksman skill, bombing one, uh, destroying buildings at long distance. It's a question of how long. You know, like is it one range of tower? Is it one tile of range? Would be nice to to know about already what they really may uh, meaning with long distance. But the overall opinion to what these changes are good, in my opinion. They are they really were really needed, especially for the flying marksmen, that they getting some kind of buffs now. But what do you think about that guns? I think it's interesting, man. That when when I first looked at this, I'm like, okay, so the Wyvern Riders are essentially are going to be like medieval freaking catapults, um, <laughs> and there could even be like strategy on it. You know, you. I mean, you, you guys are R5. Like, people love placing freaking uh, towers along the cliff sides, right? To be yeah. able to bombard people. But now you're going to be able to hit those from distance from down low. Yeah. And, and now the people up top are going to actually have to push down instead of them pushing up. I, I think it definitely adds a, a element as far as that. But then it comes to the question of how long is the distance? Is it going to be longer distance than mages? Or yeah, is it gonna be is it gonna be like Wyvern Rider, uh, Archer distance? Like where where is that distance gonna be? But that could I think that can change things, right? Especially going for spires and and stuff like that. It could definitely add um in a not really an advantage, but it can help out the attackers a little bit more. Yeah, definitely. Um, um. the other part was the normal attack damage. I think that's gonna be huge. For the Wyvern Riders, right? Because Archer mains have been um, those sneaky Archer mains, you know, as a main, as a major main. But uh, <laughs> they've been they've been uh, complaining, and rightfully so. The Wyvern Riders, like, how is it that that League of Order gets Celestials, and they're freaking insane? Then everyone runs Celestials over Vestals, but the Wyvern Riders are freaking hanging out with the halflings at your city, like. <laughs> so yeah, all around good stuff. Good stuff. Uh yeah, I love that comparison. Uh yeah, uh um yeah, you you're saying it with a with a long, you know, how long is it? Um but how like how often was it that people just, you know, camping themselves behind the choke point and you can't push because, you know, it's not possible. And there are all of these towers which you can't hit. Now you can. You can build um from the bottom part um or around and hit all of the towers and just you know, let's nuke them from the side with these, um, with a skip. Um, why you actually can also say, okay, we're gonna push, and at the same time, we're gonna use this uh, skill from the flying marksman to attack the buildings over a long distance. That's gonna be also here a lot of changes in strategies and planning. Like, I love this type of stuff, I love this type of um, meter changing, uh, when the death wing something out which gonna change the whole game, probably. So it's gonna be interesting to see how the top team's gonna play that out, and how the uh, you know how the strategy is gonna be also from them now. That's gonna be very interesting to see. So, um, improved user experience for artifact weather spear. Um, so what is basically saying? Um, it used to be that is you know strikes three times each uh, strike has a short charge up. Now it's gonna be uh, the first strike has a short charge up. The direction of subsequent strikes can change depending on the target's location. Um, I don't know. Is that a buff? Is that a debuff? Is that, or is that just like not really something doing? Like I'm, I'm not sure. I never use uh, what is be. Uh, maybe you use it. Maybe you can say something towards that. Yeah, I mean, I, I have a. I uh, fortunately have a max rattle spear. I blacked out one night and I freaking bought a bunch of gold chests after wow. I had already okay. maxed the orb. <laughs> okay, but, okay, crazy. But I, yeah. what I will say is, I think it's definitely really good, right? Because uh, using the rattle spear, it got to the point where I wasn't even using it in the field anymore because you would just get stuck, right? Yeah. So with that, with that improvement, it definitely helps it out, right? You can cast it more quickly. Uh, being able to, you know, throw launch those fr freaking spears at their necks and then freaking come back real quick. I think it should be a, a huge improvement. I wish it was like the gold, the gold crest though. You can move and throw spears like a savage. But <laughs> you know, beggars can't yeah. be choosers on this one. As long as it's an improvement, I think it's good. 
Okay, awesome. Um, thanks for your opinion on that. When Arch remains, you can go for it. Let's go. Oh, um, also, real quick, real yeah. quick on that. Uh, that that last sentence right there is crazy. The direction of the strike can change slightly each time, right? Because before you kind of just get stuck in that one area, and every, sometimes you just launch a freaking spear out, out into the abyss. So, yeah, those, that's yeah, yeah, definitely big improvement. All right, all right. When Archer mains, hey, you can go for it now. It's gonna be available artifact. Um, point four: new compat compatibility recommendations. Comp my these words, I I hate it. Compatibility recommendations will be shown when selecting hero artifact and warpads on the hero artifact and warpad screen. Okay. Um, sure. I guess. <laughs> Why not? Um, tell me what to use. Um. Reduce cost of sieges. That's an interesting point. When attacking enemy cities, 35% of 7,100 units will die, and down from 50%. That is a huge change. In, um, in my opinion, it was needed. Like, 10 to 50? <laughs> Come on. Like, that is crazy. You couldn't even rally at all any T5 player. Even when that T5 player was like 65, 70 million, it cost, it have to cost you so much you know, so much to for what? For for basically nothing, really. Now, it's going to be different. Now, people can say, okay, let's go. We, it's a 25% difference instead of a um, 40% difference, right? Um, that's going to be a whole new change in terms of if you really want to change, uh, if you really want to rally T5 players now or not. Um, and in my opinion, all these T5 main clans, like Noah, like EIS, TFS, they're gonna fucking go for the CDs now even more, in my opinion. Like, <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of short videos out there which saying, oh look at that 100 main guy got zeroed after the update mm -hmm. and stuff like that, you know? <laughs> gonna be gonna be interesting to see. But what is what is your opinion? Was that I mean you probably agree, right? That was that was uh, needed. Yeah, definitely. I mean, me personally, like, if I wasn't a content creator, I wouldn't really rally cities, especially, like, 100 mil pluses. You're just going to take substantially more deads, but since, yeah. obviously, I'm a content creator, I just freaking... It's great content. People love that stuff. Yeah. But, you know, that 35% severely wounded units down from 50, I think I think it's really good. Um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see how people react to this. I think even even at 35%, a lot of people are still not going to rally T5 cities. Yeah, 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 totally. But it's it's going to make these T5 uh, cities valuable um, in terms of, you know, like 70 million, maybe 80 million. Like these type of uh, cities going to get ready more now. Uh, mm -hmm. Especially that we have now also the structure which comes out with you where you garrison so you're gonna lose their troops as well so um yeah a lot of it, people might lose here a lot of too right so that's gonna make them you know um being um getting rallied if they're not paying attention and when they're losing even more troops so yeah gonna be interesting also here how the how the top clans are um, reacting to that and um how the player base also react to that? If they're gonna be like, if way it's gonna be more careful, or if it's just saying, yeah, fuck that, I'm gonna stay. You know, if the towers go down and I'm off territory, I gonna not, I'm not gonna leave. Ready me or not, I don't care. Um, yeah. Now we're coming to the point which I already pointed out earlier. Reduced cost of healing, base cost of resource healing has been reduced by twenty five percent. That is so mm -hmm. huge. <laughs> like. 80 what is it full, full like full healing t5 what was it 80 million 70 million mana and now 25 percent gone from that probably even with uh, new policies they're going to be also some reducing for resource healing that's gonna be massive and you having also the exchange uh, uh storehouse where you can get resources for free basically like it's gonna be crazy. Like peep now, it's actually available to go for resource healing instead of uh, free elixir healing, as uh, at least for the whales, in my opinion. You know, people can really consider now going. Okay, am I really going now for free healing if a 
resource healing giving me so much value now. You know, you know like uh twenty five percent gone from like let's say eighty million. That's freaking twenty million mana saved. Like that's a lot. Like uh People like, especially these T4 players, right? I mean, we need to say the player base is like 90% T4 and 10% T5. So these T4 players probably not understanding what I'm talking about. But guys, for for like, I don't know what, like 700, 800k healing of T5, you it have cost you 800 million, uh, 80 million mana. That's so much. That's basically a full buying of uh, fucking, how to call it? Supply depot, <laughs> one hundred bucks for one time resource healing. You know, it's uh, so. Hey, that, that's a change which I really appreciate. You know, that this finally happened. Not these small changes like I don't know, ten percent here of uh, from from you know, um, from gold or wood or something. No, twenty five percent plus exchange house where you get resources and. But yeah, uh, what do you say? Like, are you someone who who would do now resource healing, or would you stick to elixir healing? And what is your overall opinion about these changes about resource healing? I mean, honestly, resource healing is is the future of Call of Dragons. Like, at the end of the day, it's going to come down to who has the most resources and who can heal their mo the most troops. Yeah. Um, especially last season, I wasted one point four billion mana resource healing tanks because i was just launching out my gorge skull go out into the abyss um wow. so yeah 1.4 billion mana bro like i mean that's all the mana that i've been farming and saving this whole time <laughs> well that's so much yeah so now oh. yeah it's, it it's, it's yeah yeah i mean it's to the point now where resources are becoming such a big deal that I'm yeah. even incorporating the supply station into my budget. So like I have to get like the five and ten dollars whenever I can, even the hundred dollar one, maybe mm. once a month, every once in a while. Because uh, I mean, this is huge, and for players that don't have farm accounts, and they're gonna fall behind not having farm yeah. accounts because resources are resource healing is for sure the future of the game. Mm. Okay, interesting standpoint. Hey, let me know in the comments what you guys think about these changes in terms of resource healing. Do we agree to that? Do we not agree to that? Um, is that the correct direction which are we going here? Um, yeah, let me know in the comments. Uh, improved healing. You can now filter for unit type when healing. Hey, why not? You know, how many times did it happen that you clicked on here and you healed your fucking calves? Like, <laughs> I cannot, I cannot imagine how many times that already. Uh, you know have happened now that you can filter finally what type of you know unit type you want to hear maybe you can say it in settings okay this is for order like mages first when archers went in and then calves or like you know uh, flying units first when mages like something like that would be pretty nice um to have so so people not accidentally clicking on healing a unit which they don't really want to heal um yeah, I mean, nothing to say against that, I guess. Um, fix an issue with a description of in the skill Oaken order with skills effect and strengthens unaffected. Okay. Uh, greatly increase daily resource healing at the hot pit. Increase daily resource healing limit to 6 million. That just double the amount. It was used to be for 3 million. Now it's 6 fucking million. Holy shit. 6 million. In 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 also with the changes of resource healing gonna be less. You have a sh exchange house, like, and now you're having also up to six min healing. That's massive. That's massive. So, yeah, do you have anything to say to these last three points here, or you want to go to a line system? Uh, just pretty much what I said earlier. Okay. Just like the the resource healing and all that stuff is um pretty insane, bro. So don't yeah. slack on the farming guys. <laughs> yeah, I need to f I, I already started farming a lot again on my on my main with mana. Like uh, oh, uh it's uh yeah, I mean put on the notification, send out every two hours farmers and then you're good, so yeah. Um Alliance system, some good change in my opinion here. Improved alliance lock displays. Alliance skills will be re recorded in the alliance lock when used, when officers remove votes or la layered portals. It will be recorded in the alliance lock when coordinate 
are displayed where corresponding server will also be shown. All of these changes, yeah, sure, why not? You know, it's nice to have them so you can see more into, uh, you know, when something got used and um, or when something happened. So, you know, you know, um, who did it and, and when you can ask this person. So it's good to have that, um, but nothing really crazy now. Um, we, that's now a really um, a very, very good point. We move cooldown for territory relocation. After players complete the August Stone stage unscared in their home realm, the cooldown on territorial relocations will be removed. In future seasons, there will be no cooldown. Guys, do you really understand? Like, this is a massive, this is massive, massive, massive change. That is probably the best change I have ever saw in the game until now. Like, that you can get rid of the TP cooldown, gonna be such a good experience for the player base, in my opinion. Like, how often was it for, like, think about it, guys. Think by yourself. How often did it happen that, you know, you were out of the alliance, and then in that time where you had this TP code on, something happened on the map, and you could do nothing. You couldn't help your alliance. You could not go there and, and, and take part of the actions, you know. How often did that happen? How often, you know? Because of you um, wanted to get resources, so you went out with your main account to the farm alliance and and transfer uh, transfer your resources. Right? But now that they're saying in future seasons there will be no cooldown, that is massive. That is very very massive. And like I said, in my opinion, that is the best change so far in the game. Like it's gonna be such a great experience for anyone in this game, and. I don't really understand why there even is that type of TP cooldown. Like this was, um, I don't know. It's just shit for this player experience. But again, what what do you say to that? Dude, it's gonna be it's gonna be freaking insane. Like without without the without the cooldown, people are gonna be able to do those freaking assassin freaking hit squads at the end of seasons. Just <laughs> join a random farm alliance and then freaking fifty cities just TP in. Um, I think it's gonna be crazy. Um. Is it? Let me see. Did I read that correctly? Is that just for Home Kingdom, or is it also going to be for KV for or for KVK? No, it's going to be for both, for my understanding. So the Home Kingdom is going to be on mm. uh, when the Augustone stage on scared. Oh yeah, yeah. And then in future seasons, so I assume it's going to be in season of strife, probably. I, I would assume so. There will be no cooldown, so it's probably going to be like a season of strife thing, um, only, um. Howsoever, but they're pointing it out that in future seasons there will be no cooldown is already something which I'm very happy about. You know, um, Home Kingdom doesn't matter that much to me because you're just mostly shilling there and farming, so nothing really happening there. But the, the, the key point is here, like you said, like um, being able to do this type of, you know, sneaky attacks, uh, jumping into farmer lines or something and, and go there um, um, and attack directly or, you know, switching the alliances uh, like what like we were needed remember guys um like uh, we were needed to go from hh to sh and everyone was on fucking tp go down and it was massive and people got ready because they didn't shield it or didn't pay attention to that um and now people can just tp out you know um and and get their city safe and, and stuff it's gonna be so good it's gonna be such a good game experience i cannot say how hyped i am for that to read that like that was one of the things which I said from the beginning that need to be getting rid of. Like, this is just a bad player experience. And no one likes that, so good to see that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, it's it's everything what I called out until now. Like, I, 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 I was on the uh, last year on the Colony event, and I talked with the developers. I said, yo, guys, you need to bring something which the kingdoms gives, uh, gives an identity. We need to have kingdom identity. It is not working out with the alliance identity over long term. Right now, it may be, but we need something for the long term, you know. And kingdom identity is the way to go for that. Then, you know, getting rid of this uh, TP cooldown. Why do we even have it? It makes no sense. Why do you give the players such a bad experience for changing alliances? Like, I don't know. Uh, makes no sense to me. You know, like a lot of stuff which, uh, which, which 
I and others uh, have pointed out that needs to be either gone completely or need to be changed by doing it. So I'm very happy to see that once again, they listen here to the community and saying, okay, guys, you don't like the TP code on. We're going to get rid of it in the whole king completely when this August is going to finish. And in future seasons, there will be also no TP code on anymore. Like, this is so good to see that the, that the devs also, you know, starting really to listen. Like, remember, guns at the beginning, um, a lot of the time people have pointed out something and the devs didn't really listen. All right. But now with the last updates, I feel like since the, like, probably since end of last year, um, they really have started to listen more carefully to what the uh, player base want. And a lot of the recent updates were having also stuff into it, which the players didn't want it or wanted. You know what I mean? Like, so it's, it's, it's very good to see that they also listen to that point and getting rid of that, in my opinion. No, yeah, definitely. It's definitely good for to see that. I mean, so far, a lot of the things that have enraged the community have been fixed. And that's, that's you know, that's really good to see. Because there's definitely a few things that people were enraged about that I'm like, oh, they're going to make any, I don't, I don't know, they're going to budge. But mm. luckily, they, they have been listening to the community really well. And I hope it continues going that way. Like I've yeah. told some people that have quit the game before, I'm like, look, you know, a lot of these things are kind of quality of life stuff that people are complaining about for the most part. I'm like, yeah. but as long as the devs are actively trying to make it better, that's what matters. Once the devs are yeah. like not making anything better, then 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 it's an issue. So it is good. Yeah, I uh, good point what you said out. Uh, I I would agree with that for sure. Um, interesting point here. The the third one, warband members can now join each other rallies and can also garrison each other's cities and buildings, especially with a TP cooldown. It's gonna be interesting because people can just jump around or like you know with, with the side alliances or second alliances can jump in and and help building um uh, uh helping in in the garrison or ready so hey that that just makes it better you know that just brings also the the alliances together in my opinion like this type of stuff where where the warband um can do more stuff together um it's good like, this is exactly what I talked about in terms of kingdom identity. Bring players together, made stuff which makes them, you know, play together the game and not make it alliances separated uh, stuff, you know. Sure, behemoths, it's one thing, you know, alliance uh, 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 separated. Uh, but, like, when it comes to war stuff, you know, we have already a war band. We're not attacking each other. So why, you know, why is it not possible that players can join the raddies and, and, and garrison? I mean, it's a warband, right? You can go through it. So why can you not join it? That's like That was also a point which have not made any sense to me. So glad to see that they have put it out there now that you can actually do that. And, and in my opinion, that just brings uh, the player base, the, the players in the kingdom together and doing more stuff. Because right now we have the problem in, in 293, for example, like a lot of the folks in HH doing separated stuff uh, from, from SH. So, uh, you know, uh it's it's good to see that we can now call also yo guys everyone gonna be here we're gonna take uh, the path now i don't need to say yo guys you can't join the ready because it's eight uh, sh only you know what i mean so i don't need to abandon basically a whole alliance and say to them you can't join you can't join because you are in a different alliance i hate that so it's it, i'm very happy that this is now possible um and then that's something for the for the leadership alliance marker and warband marker limit increased to twenty. I you cannot imagine how often did I complain about. Like you can also see it on my stream. Uh, like out of nothing, I say, "Oh shit, we have no one marker. Why does the devs not add more markers? I don't understand this." And how they finally did it. We have now forty markers available to place on the stupid map. Thank God. I'm so happy about that. Holy shit. Um, uh, you want to add something to the line system or do we want to go to the last point here? Oh, that's good. I think you, you touched on all the good points there. All right. All right. Other improvements. Um, the first point is very interesting. 
New Beginners Migration Future. Players in Season 1 can use Beginners Migration to relocate their city to any server in the construction phase that has space for Beginners Migration user. Item will be automatically issued to all newly created characters and will be scrapped when your city reaches level 12, your character reaches 7 days old, or the Brink of War event begins on your server. So what that basically means for everyone who's not understanding what that exactly is, that's gonna be now the jumper project, right? Um, that's gonna be, so you're gonna create uh, in, a, in a server an account and you just look that you don't reach one of these requirements. So you stay um, with a beginner's migration. So what that means then you can jump to a newer server and you're having a good advantage over the people who directly starting in that kingdom. You know, so that's going to be now the case that you're going to see a lot of jumper projects happening. You're going to see a lot of people pointing that out also in the new servers uh, kingdom chat that, yo guys, join the uh, jumper project now. We're going to go to, I don't know, server 500. And uh, so in like six days. Uh, so um, nothing bad. It's going to give you a, a slightly ahead um, situation. Also going to be good for the free to plan low spender because when they're not having the, the problems which they're using to have in the beginning of a season with a behemoth and stuff, you know, that they're like having not the troops to participate or that the heroes are not good enough. So I like that change. Um, I definitely like that change. Then the next point is the change of the dragon trail. Going to be called now differently. And also you're going to receive buffs. Um, you can see that here in the last sentence. What exactly that gonna be? What type of buffs? They didn't say it here, but I mean we're gonna see it in six days when it's coming out, right? Um, the next point: added new auto explore and auto gather features. Auto explore will be automatically unlocked when you scout camp. Uh, reach level seven and auto gathering at level eight. Exploring the map is easier than ever. Now it's the question about is that auto gathering in terms of since it's in a in a scout camp. Is it towards the stuff on the map? So such as the villages and, and, and you know, uh, all of these things which you can collect on the map? Or is the auto gathering towards resource gathering? Because if it would be resource gathering, like that you can auto gather resources on the map, that's go that would be very, very boring. But they pointed it out, right? They said that they're testing right now some stuff of auto doing, such as auto gathering, auto exploring. Um, and some uh, like other stuff like auto auto darkling hunting and an auto um, pet hunting. Um, so gonna be interesting to see how what exactly do they mean with gathering. So yeah, but it's good to see the auto exploring. Like it's it's that is that is garbage. <laughs> so um, Increased quantity limits for promoting legions. The quantity limit for promoting legions is now 10 times the quantity limit for training legions. Uh, from my understanding, that basically means like if you're promoting from T4 to T5, you can do it up to 10 times directly instead of just one time. From my understanding, let me know in the comments if I'm wrong about that and if you're having, um, if you're having a different opinion about that. Um, added warpad and artifact share buttons. You can now share your artifacts and warpads in the shared window. Okay, cool. Why not? Um, change uh, lunch, uh, limits for nicknames. Okay, why not? Improved animation for obtaining items. Um, okay, you know when you know uh, why not? Improved graphics for Elven units. And with that, we have the whole update covered. Um, Guns, are you here? I see you muted. Yeah, I'm here, bro. Okay, um, so I will going um, through all the points um, and explain what you know what that means for us now. Do you have anything like what? What is your opinion about these changes, especially the the, the first three, the first three points, which I think here are the most important other improvement points. Uh, especially the first three. Let's see. I'm scrolling through it. Yeah, I mean. Um... Yeah, number one is going to add just a bunch of different uh, dynamics to the game. That should be interesting. That's going to be like endless content there of testing. Yeah. Uh, Brink of War is definitely good to help during that boring stages where we're all dying of boredom before 
even one the first pass opens. Yeah. And the new behemoth is good. It's going to bring some players back that are collectors. Uh, yeah, what, what, what is your opinion about the auto gathering and auto exploring features? Like, would you say the auto gathering is like towards since it's having something to do with um, the scout camp? Is it going to be towards the, the stuff on the map, such as the villages? Or is it what what some people expecting is auto gathering resources? What, what yeah, do I think you think? It, I think it actually is auto gathering resources because there's been a few people that have been telling me to create a new account and show off the new auto gathering feature where you can literally just gather resources. So I, I still have to see it myself to be a hundred percent sure, but there's been several people that have been telling me that it's in the new, in the new, uh, kingdoms already. Wow. Okay. I may going to check it out by myself. And also, um, yeah. I mean, uh, okay. So no. Okay. So if that really auto gathering resources, that would be so good. Like not only we have, the minus 25% cost on resource healing. We have an also auto gathering resources. We having the exchange house where you can um, put these points into resources and we having more resource healing uh, per day. That's a lot of good changes towards resource healing. We're really, really trying to, you know, make it possible that people are like not complaining about resource healing anymore. So. Hey, I mean, I'm t I'm down for that. If if that is actually the thing, auto gathering, I, I don't need to lock in every fucking two hours, and I can sleep my you know six hours and or do my eight hours of work without locking in and and sending farmers out. Hey, I'm I'm down for that. Give me that. Sure, why why not? I mean, it's not gonna harm anyone. You know, it's just gonna be good for the people that they don't need to you know um put an alarm every fucking two hours and and logging into mm. the game. You know, so hey. Why not? So, um, if you're now going for uh, uh, one last statement um, towards the whole update, if you reconsider, like, the, if you think about the whole update now, um, what would you say towards that update? If you compare it also with the previous updates which you had, would you say that is literally right now the new top update which you're having in the game? Or would you say there are still some points missing for you personally, which you would love to see in the future updates? I think, dude, I think it is the best one. I'll be honest. I'm not gonna lie. I I, I do wish to see um, increase free healing, like literal mm -hmm. production. I don't think that should have ever been nerfed. I think they need to bring that back. Yeah. Um, however, I see what they're trying to do with the resource healing. But yeah, dude. I mean, this is a lot, man new like a new style of map behemoth heroes skill exchange like yeah it's insane yeah and, and i can only agree with one like there were some good changes in the in the previous updates which were also really really needed but i think this update covers such a lot which i would just can say like you cannot ignore that this is a good update this is really, really a good update, in my opinion, and it might be really, in my opinion, as well, the, the best one which we had so far. Um, like you said, it covers a lot of new stuff, like a new map, new heroes, new events. It's going to changing stuff. It's going to um, bringing us the non-TP cooldown into the game. It's bringing us uh, resource healing, like an available option now, also for low spenders, probably. Um, with an exchange house, it's going to bring the the bad experience um, in terms of uh, it's turning the bad experience in, uh, for the low spender and free to play in terms of getting treaties and arrows into actually not a bad experience anymore because you can get gems from the exchange house. They buffing finally the flying marksmen. They, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's such a lot of stuff, which I would consider were really really needed but also makes this update um the best one right now in the game which we had so far so i definitely agree on that point um yeah so thanks a lot guns for taking here the one hour and 20 minutes time for going with me through oh the... shit it's been 120 <laughs> yeah it's it's 120 already <laughs> uh it was longer than expected but hey it was really really enjoyable to um also her from a from a, disp a different uh youtuber 
the opinion about this type of updates and um, apparently also you know you're playing by yourself and Noah so you are also um, one of the top players did you play it in a beta as well Co no. Uh, Co no okay I but wish. you base <laughs> but you basically since the the launch uh, playing Call of Duty so you are also like me an older player so yeah it was really nice to have your opinion here on the on the video thanks for taking the time for that and um, yeah I really appreciate it for sure, bro. Anytime. Appreciate you having me. Hey, you, you're always uh, welcome here on the stream. If you if you want to do something together, let me know. Um, also to you guys, uh, let me please down in the comments what you think about this collaboration. Would you love to see more content uh, with guns on the future uh, in the future on my channel? Would you love to see also that we're doing some streams together? You know, there's a lot of stuff which we um, which we can do. Um, and we could do also, for example, an idea, just an idea. Um, we could, for example, go through accounts and check out the accounts, such as if that is, uh, if we're gonna call that a farmer or a fighter. I don't know if you have saw that um, mm. from Plodo, like the Voice of Kingdom streamer who used to do also Call of Dragon stuff. Um, apparently, he did that stuff, and I really, you know, like that type of content. So. That would be, for example, something which we could do as a collaboration for long term together. You know, maybe once every two weeks or something, we're doing a stream and the community sending us accounts, uh, reviews, uh, photos, and which we could go through. So you see, guys, there's a lot of content, a lot, a lot of ideas which you could do together. So yeah, let me know in the comments what you think about that. Um, and yeah, I wish you a great rest of the day. Have a great start in the next day. Stay healthy, everyone. And we're going to see us then on the next one. See you, guys. Peace.